know, fuse deposition modeling is one of the original part making processes with additive. I'm here at Rapid 2023 with Patrick Dunn. He's Vice President of Advanced Application Development at 3D Systems. Patrick, we're standing in front of a machine which takes sort of the original FDM concept, but adds sort of a new high performance spin. Tell me about it. Yeah, thanks, Jim. That's a, that's a really good observation. Um, there's a couple of things with this technology, uh, which we refer to as uh, thermoplastic extrusion-based technology. In this case, um, instead of using filament, we're actually using pellet. And uh, so that's why it's called a, the Titan Pellet Extruder System. And there's a couple of implications of transitioning from filament to pellet. Uh, the first implication is economics. It has a massive impact on economics. When you start to uh, tap into commodity grade injection molding plastics. Um, it means that you can expand a range of economically justifiable applications by an order of magnitude essentially, right? So we're seeing customers do things with this platform that historically they could have done, but they could never justify doing from a, from a, from a cost perspective, right? So that includes things like there's companies out there right now that are extremely successful at printing, large format furniture, sand casting molds, um, thermoforming tools, uh, mock-up for uh, aerospace simulators. Uh, there's a whole range of applications that uh, require very large parts that are economically justifiable. And then the second implication of transitioning from filament to commodity-grade pellets is that um, it enables a massive range of plastics to be processed, right? You're no longer reliant upon a vendor taking pellet and essentially extruding it, but you can grab the actual raw pellet itself from an injection molding line, put it into your printer, and you have access to almost infinite materials when you consider, uh, when you add blending to that equation, right? So you can take carbon fiber filled polycarbonate and mix it with uh, flame retardant polycarbonate and get all kinds of, of, of properties and capabilities, essentially. Now, uh, you're using, a, presumably you can use commodity grade thermoplastics as well, but using pelletized thermoplastics as we know them commercially, that are commercially available. To Do you expect firms that are already familiar with perhaps extrusion processes on large scale to sort of adapt this technology or, or bring it in-house to take advantage of their existing knowledge base? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, highly complementary and augments a lot of traditional manufacturing workflows. Um, like I said, we're seeing a, a lot of tooling applications, whether it's thermoforming tools, uh, sand casting molds is a very significant application for this technology. Uh, we're also seeing a lot of jigs and fixtures, you know, historically where, again, you could make a jig or a fixture, but it, it's not economically justifiable to use additive to address that application. Now you can do that, essentially. Now you mentioned thermoforming. That's an interesting application because thermoforming is usually chosen for parts that are quite large or of a, a, quite a high aspect ratio. Uh, how big a part can you make with this machine? So the build envelope is uh, it's one, millimeter, one meter square. Uh, so you're able to build diagonally on this machine uh, quite large parts. Um, we have a lot of customers as well that are also able to build much larger parts through a process of assembly. So you can, uh, for example, uh, design your parts to have uh, lap joints and uh, dovetail joints. And uh, you can glue and assemble parts to create as, as large as you need. I mean, I've seen examples of uh, carbon fiber layup tooling, for example, uh, for some yacht applications that are in excess of three meters, essentially. Uh, which industries do you anticipate will be, uh, be big adopters of this technology? You've mentioned uh, furniture applications. You've mentioned, uh, um, in one case, a yacht application. Yeah. Aerospace, automotive, the majors? Yeah, there's a lot of applications in aerospace, uh, in particular uh, air ducting, for example. Um, we have a lot of companies that are looking at creating complex, low volume, high performance uh, air ducting. Um, because they're able to get access to carbon fiber reinforced plastics, uh, plastics that have ESD additives, right, in order to inhibit um, some of the, uh, so, you know, deal with some of the electrical requirements and stuff like that. Um, we also have um, aerospace companies that are doing carbon, carbon fiber composite layup tooling. Um, in the yachting industry, uh, there's both tooling applications, composite, glass fiber, glass fiber, and there's also uh, direct parts. So if you look at these luxury power boats, it's, it's really interesting. There's actually a lot of um, a lot of kind of like non-structural um, aesthetic styling and cladding that's taking place in the luxury power boat industry. You see um, application like kind of like shark gill fin, shark gill fins and stuff like that, that are more kind of visually design centric, uh, where folks are taking off the shelf. Um, plastics that are resistant to salt water. There's a whole bunch of thermoplastics that are extremely resistant to salt water. Printing them, 
a little bit of finishing and then doing gel coating, for example, and they're getting, um, they have a, a motor manufacturer that's able to create these uh, low volume, uh, high value uh, cladding components, essentially. So it's a great, ex a great example of an application. So. Large composite part making with a pellet based material at 3D Systems. At Rapid TCT 2023, the air was electric. The excitement about manufacturing America is palpable. New technologies, new ways of implementing additive manufacturing, not just for prototyping, but as a true production process, were all over this show floor. The future looks very bright for manufacturing America based on what we have seen here. Thanks for joining us on the show floor. See you next time. Today's episode is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.com TV today.